Peter Zalmayev, who is the director of the Eurasia Democracy Initiative, and he joins us from Ukraine's capital, Kiev. Great to have you on the program. Welcome to you. Uh, Peter, very strong words from these uh, world leaders, especially Angela Merkel, describing it as attempted murder. Um, of course, the Kremlin denies this, but help us understand the psychology uh, behind this. How does this serve the Kremlin's uh, interests? Because it's not often uh, that you hear that a leader of a major superpower is accused of attempted murder. Well, you know, uh, obviously what you're hearing from the Kremlin is uh, denial, denial, denial. We've never heard anything different. Uh, they are disputing the results of the, the lab results from Germany. They're saying that uh, uh, they would have to see the results in order to uh, either corroborate, or corroborate them or to uh, take it a step further and to uh, confirm the results. Uh, it is uh, now been made clear that the substance that was used to poison Mr. Navalny is not a joke. And whereas before the Russian government could plausibly claim that this may have been the doing of a regional boss, let's say, considering that Navalny was flying into Moscow from Siberia. Now that we see uh, that this is Navichok, a very rare substance who, which you cannot just manufacture in your home lab. This makes it much more difficult for the Russian side to claim that this has nothing to do with the central government. And that explains the harsh uh, reaction that you have seen from uh, world leaders, uh, including from Germany. And I have to, um, you know, I have to um, commend uh, her strong words, considering that Germany is about to finalize the last stretch of the gas pipeline with Russia, which will benefit, among other places in Germany, her own, Merkel's own home uh, state. So uh, this is a very difficult time for the Europeans uh, to, 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 to navigate this terrain, considering that it remains economically linked with Russia. But at the same time, Putin's belligerent actions leave it no choice but to take further steps. Uh, when Mr. Litvinenko was poisoned in uh, 2006 in Britain, the West didn't really react. And led, that led to poisonings, further poisonings, including against Mr. Skripal and his daughter. And now we see it. Indeed. And Peter, that is my next question, because there have been some calls uh, for sanctions against Russia over this, but there doesn't seem to be much impetus. As you said, it's, you know, we've been here before. Um, so will we see more of these incidents, do you think? I think we will. I, uh, for, for, for Putin, it remains a very tricky calculation. Uh, on the one hand, he uh, risks a program and further sanctions from the West. But on the other hand, he sees the protests that, are, that he has in the far east of Russia, in the city of Khabarovsk, and in neighboring Belarus, and he sees them as a greater threat to his political survival. And so for them, if we assume that it was the Kremlin that poisoned Navalny, it in a way, in a perverted sort of uh, uh, yet steady logic of the Kremlin, this is a rational choice. Because by using Novichok, they are signaling to others that it is us, and anyone who dares cross our path will suffer. Mr. Navalny was a prominent blogger, and probably the most prominent, most popular blogger, who was very harsh against the Kremlin. And I think at, at this point, Putin smells and smelled very real danger to his uh, regime, to his own survival. Peter Zalmayev, always great to get your analysis on TRT World. Thank you so much. We appreciate it.